Excellent. Hi there, you join me on a, a lovely sunny day outside. You can hear everybody's out in their garden making as much noise as possible for the background of uh, this video. I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios and today I'm going to be going through part of the, uh, the Clipex Pro um, setup uh, and part of that is, is actually called Macrobat. Now Macrobat, Macro Acrobat, kind of gives it away in its name and one of the, the downsides of macros within Ableton is they're pretty rigid, they're fixed to to eight, and can't do much about that, but they're, they're fixed to only controlling what is within their own rack. And with Macrobat, we're gonna break a few of those myths and actually give you the ability to, well, go anywhere. Let's have a look at how things work. <coughs> okay, so the first thing that we're not gonna do is we're, we're not gonna install anything because Macrobat actually comes as a standard part of Clipex Pro. So once you've gone through that installation procedure, you're ready to rock and roll. Now, as with Clipex, Macrobat does come with a manual and we'd always suggest reading through the manual first just to give yourself an overview of things. As with everything within Clipex Pro, you need to pay attention to the syntax. It's very, very easy, but you just need to make sure that you spell things right, which I commonly don't. Uh, receive is a great one, I before E, etc. And in a similar intent to how Clipex works, is it you, you've got your X controls, your X triggers, etc., etc. Macrobat has different rack types. Now, there's actually a lesson uh, within your help view if we just go to the help view here and go to packs if you're having trouble accessing packs within the latest version of Ableton Live 10 then actually check the manual for Clipex Pro and there's a manual walk around to enable you to find them and within here we do have a Macrobat Racks tutorial now I'm not going to go through that because I, I've been playing with this for around well to be fair it's 10 past 1 about three hours and in that time I've achieved one thing I've always wanted to achieve and I've learned sort of three or four of the different racks already so I'm going to go through those on this video and we'll revisit some of the others later. Now the first one I, I'm going to look at and one of the things I really like about Macrobat is the fact that I don't have to have an expensive controller. I mean if you've got a push to or a push the screen can come to life with with Clipex Pro and, and Macrobat, but I'm just going to use a little launch control here uh, and uh, I'm going to go into user one. Now, obviously, this is standard MIDI map, mapping stuff, and uh, if I go into here, I'm just going to map this knob. There we go. Excellent. So, all this is, and I could create this from scratch, is effectively I've dragged in a blank audio effect rack bring it so I can view it command R control R if you're on the uh, windows name it anything and then square brackets and square brackets tell uh, the script that this is actually gonna be a macrobat rack and in this case I'm gonna name it learn uh, there you go and pretty much that's as much as you need to do to define the name of the rack and then it becomes naming the macro. Now, in true Blue Peter style, which uh, all the UK viewers will understand, <coughs> here's one I prepared earlier. What I've done is I've renamed macro number one as, in square brackets, learn. So, what does that do? Well, let me click on the volume. And remember my uh, control is mapped to that. It now learns the volume okay clever it's changed to another volume with the mouse it's updated and of course because I've got my value scaling settings in preferences and if I just go to live preferences uh, link MIDI takeover mode and the choice I normally go for value scaling because it it doesn't rely on you getting back to an exact value and if you turn and dial up you expect the parameters to start moving up and vice versa down and effectively whatever I click on and control whoops, it automatically updates to take control of it 
Now, if I wanted to, and um, let's go through the, the mapping again, um, and on the MIDI on off, I'm gonna click that, so that bottom button there. So now, that's on, and let's move it to track one, so I'm in control of track one. Now, if I turn the rack off, and move to track two, you would expect the macro, because it's in view, to follow to track two, but because the rack is off, it retains control over what you'd set it at. So it's a, it's a way of locking a parameter, if you like. So that's pretty cool, and especially if you've got one of those large kind of one knob controllers, then that's gonna be a, a pretty decent thing to be using. Okay, what should I do next? All right, let's go to factory, and I think it's two. Uh, two, no, factory three. There we go. <coughs> So I've got control of my macros here. Uh, let's have a look at what did I call R&R. &R. Ah, random and reset. Wow. Now, these can be really, really rather cool. Uh, I've got Das Funk as a, a setting in there. Let's just put some uh, random notes in. Now, let's have a listen to what they sound like. Oh, way over the top there. Wonderful. Do, do. Excellent. So you've got your little ditty melody playing, etc., etc., and you like the sound of it, but you know you want a bit of randomization. Well, this rack here, this one, uh, no macros map, nothing at all. It's just called in square brackets RND for random. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on and magically it's going to randomize the first device or rack that isn't a macrobat rack to its right. Now if I turn it off again you'll notice it changes and so on and so forth but it's not affecting this chorus device over here so when it's just RND in brackets on its own it's only going to it's going to focus on one device if I wanted to reset that particular device back to the standard, as in you dropped a blank uh, device or instrument into live, turn the reset, rack on. Similar principle, no macros, it's just called square brackets, RST, square brackets. There's probably a technical term for square brackets, but I'm not sure of what that is yet. Again, random, reset and the change of state from on to off triggers the action. But I still have this lovely little chorus doing here and I want to randomize everything. So in this rack, square brackets, RND, space all, does everything to its right. Very cool indeed. Reset all, can you guess? Yeah. Resets everything back to the standard, again, your default when you dragged it into the set. And similar to all the other racks in there, it's just RST space, all in your square brackets. Right, let's get to business. Chain mixing time, woo, love this. Got a drum max set up, obviously I've not got much of a controller to be playing the, the drums as it were. But if you consider each one of these uh, samples, slots, is a chain and as you can see we've got two sends on this particular uh, set because I've got the reverb on A and the, the delay on B. I've got uh, a volume, uh, a, pa a volume and I've got pan etc. So this rack here is called chain vol or chain volume. Now the macros themselves can either be named after the the numeric position they fall in so number one looks after number one and as you can see there goes up and down of course with MIDI controller two now the beauty of this if you have automation going is that you also will see bi-directional feedback as well so you're never going to be in a position where you move and you find oh whoops I didn't want to do that the other way of naming as a convention is to name it as the macro as the chain itself is named so in this case square brackets and at this stage you have to put it in the speech bubbles uh, rim 909 speech bubble bracket 
and of course that then oh, that will enable me to change the volume now that's quite cool because if you wanted to you could name all of these by the names of the slots and then if you if you ended up moving them for any reason or other then really cool you'll actually see those move and retain their mappings now the other two racks in these chain uh, mix device chain mix racks rather chain pan Ta -da! very simple and again the same bi-directional feedback and send so I've got control of send A and you can do this up to the maximum number of sends which from memory is 12 all you do is you name your rack chain send and then the letter that represents the rack A now the other thing that I've done in here uh, we'll come back to this one in a, another video is receive and send now this is where Acrobat really gets clever. What we've looked at is effectively racks that can look after bits that are outside of them, other parameters. How this works is a basically a receiver rack that can pick up the names of macros of sender racks elsewhere in your set. Now I've actually got, I've got one, two, uh, I've got a blank audio effect rack here just to flick into every now and again uh, I've got just two sender racks at the moment and when I have finished doing my setup I'll move these into individual tracks and move this bass receiver into the group or a master now this is brilliant I've got a receiver and that receiver is set up to receive from macros called base 1, base 2, base 3, base 4 and so on and then I've got a sender rack. In fact, I've got two sender racks. Now, the difference between the sender racks is the names of the macros. So in here, I've got base one. And in here, I've got base two. Now, what happens? Base one. And base two. So I've got one rack controlling multiple racks. Now, give this a thought for a second. One of the, the downsides of trying to... DJ with a push potentially is you have to focus on a track on a rack to affect the the signal effectively so most of us as DJs would be used to having a channel strip and being able to quickly move between tracks with push it's very difficult to affect the bass on three channels at the same time to really tighten up your mix well not anymore because what I've done is I've actually set up three receiver racks here and they're all based on the same principle I've got base one to eight, mid one to eight, high one to eight, and in each of the sender racks, I've got mid one, and then mid two, and then I'd continue the theme. Now, what that means is what whichever one of these tracks, I, uh, sorry, racks I focus on, it's going to look after the high, and we move across there, to here, Okay, now, why is that cool? Leave that on one, of course, uh, and put that on two. Okay, let's move the base, the mid, the high. Remember, in the, these racks actually aren't doing anything in particular, and now I'm able to go through Oops, not that one. Up, oh, up. Oh. So I'm in charge of the base across eight tracks, and let's just do, let's put base one and base two up to full and have a look. Base one up full, base two up full, and just so uh, we we'll turn it back to zero, 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 and let's put them to halfway to show the bi-directional feedback. and we're back to the middle. Now, this is great with the launch control, but maybe I'll show it in, in another video. Imagine the push to screen, and along the bottom you've got eight racks. Each rack focuses on one parameter, but across eight tracks. So you can quickly switch the base and change the base across all eight, start to equalize them, bring the mids, change the highs, fade to gray, all of that good stuff. 
like I said, three hours in, as I've been dabbling with, we'll come back with another video with some more of the stuff that's in Macrobat. Thanks for watching.